Conker, Banjo, and Tip Top debuted in this game before they debuted in their own game. To unlock Drumstick, you must get all four Grand Prix trophies, run over a frog with a red feather on its head. In the DS remake, you must use the stylus to flip one of the frogs up to a pond on a cliff and then run him over. To unlock TT, you must race his ghost in time trial mode on every racetrack. Dixie Kong and Tiny Kong replace Banjo and Conker in the DS remake. This is also the first time we get to see Tiny Kong's redesign. All the courses in the original N64 version had no Donkey Kong related themes up until the DS remake. Tricky is the only boss who mentioned the world by its actual name. The other bosses don't even say the name of their own world. Wispig round 1 was notorious for being difficult as hell. As a kid it almost took me about 3 months just to beat him. Thank god round 2 was way more easier. Adventure 2 is only available after you beat the game for the very first time. The characters outside of their vehicles are only shown in the intro, play select, and both party celebration. Pipsy is the only female playable character in the original game, up until the DS remake. Crunch is by far the worst character in the game. His turning is awful, his speed is awful, and his acceleration is absolute garbage as hell. If you manage to beat Wispig with him, props to you, you're the real MVP. Can anybody tell me what the hell they're actually chanting in Hop Top Volcano? Because for the life of me, I don't understand what they're saying. Wispig and Taj were playable characters in the DS version but not in the original N64 version. Tricky's kids were only seen after you beat Wispig for the second time. They didn't appear in the DS remake, for some reason. When you boot up the game, after a few seconds, you can hear sounds of children laughing. <laughs> People dubbed this as the Diddy Laugh. It turns out this comes from a pre-recorded stock sound effect from the Hollywood Edge Premiere Edition Volume 1. In Haunted Woods, there appears to be a bunch of ghosts of Wispig floating around. You'd think Wispig would have been dead, but I don't think that's the case. I think Wispig probably used a projector of some sort to scare the characters in order to stop them from racing. But in the end, it didn't work. There are two locations in the intro of Diddy Kong Racing that always bother me as a kid. The first being where Diddy, Pipsy, and Timber were introduced were introduced along with their vehicles. The second is where Wispig was chasing the other characters and is most likely hinted that this was reused for the introduction for Bumper due to the cut trees in both scenes. As a kid I always want to drive and go to these locations but it's only seen in the intro and it's not in the game. In the intro, there's a yellow dinosaur, presumably a T-Rex, obviously, can be seen in the introduction of Bumper. The T-Rex was never seen in the game. It might be possible that the T-Rex might have been used as an unused boss, or possibly a background character of some sort, just like the green dinosaur in Dino Domain. I find it quite odd, the lava in Hot Top Volcano can't hurt you at all, and it acts like water physics. If you play two-player mode, the sky has a different color, and all the racetracks are low textured. When you beat the bosses of any of the four worlds, you can activate the silver coin challenge. The player must collect eight silver coins 
and come in first. When I was a kid, there was one racetrack that was so difficult that I believe it's on par with facing Wispig. Round one, Greenwood Village Silver Coin Challenge. Oh dear God. The very short, sharp turns. Davey's going way too fast for a course that's very small. And if you miss one silver coin or more, you have to restart the entire race all over again. And it sucks even more if you don't get first place. Thank God I got better at the game and this is no longer a problem. Oh, who am I kidding? I'm still having problems with this course. So screw you, Greenville Village. I hope that village fucking burned. Greenwood Village is a secret multiplayer map in Jet Force Gemini. Does anybody find it weird that there's a total of 47 balloons in the entire game in adventure mode? You think it could have been like an even number like 48 or better yet 50? But no, we're stuck with 47. And even to this day, it still bothers me. It's just a weird number to stop at, you know? If you already know already, Ty the Genie speaks in an Indian accent. In the original version of Diddy Kong Racing. Hello friend. Select your vehicle. Abracadabra. Can I help you by the way But in the DS remake, he speaks in a British accent. I heard that there's two possible reasons for this. Reason number one is they didn't want to offend anybody from Taj using an Indian accent. And reason number two, Rare also helped on making the DS version of the game. And it's located in the UK. But I find the second reason to be weird because Rare obviously worked on the DS remake and they worked on the original. In Icicle Pyramid, if you go up the ramp, go through the red balloon and stay there, and keep on going through the red balloon, the other CPU characters will go to your location and try to shoot you down. And that's where you, you keep on shooting them down until you win. In the box art of Diddy Kong Racing, you can see Wizpick shooting lightning and holding a burning tree, but he never used any magical attacks in the game. Kinda wish he did. In Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, in the level Logbox 720 Act 3, when Gruntilda was talking to Banjo and, and Kazooie, Banjo drops a reference to Diddy Kong Racing by mentioning a genie and a pig. Diddy Kong Racing was also one of the right answers in Log's quiz. There's an unused Crescent Island song that went unused. So here, have a listen. If you wait long enough in the main lobby area, you can hear sounds of children singing to the song. There's an unused character select theme. It was highly hinted that Taj was going to be a playable character in the N64 version. Once you play adventure mode in a new save file, pay attention to the bushes in the intro. They were using an early build of the game. After the intro sequence, there are now fewer bushes. A tree and a red line appears. In Spaceport Alpha, from the starting line, go to the right and you'll see a hidden large hole. It's most likely there was going to be a key there. Thus meaning that there could possibly be a unused challenge level. Just like the other worlds in the game. But it got scrapped. Magic Codes was basically this game's cheat codes. So here's the list of them.
playing banjo. I'm banjo. Lover the Octopus is not seen in the ending cutscene of the game, but he did appear in the end of the DS remake. Despite the concept art and the promotional art of Timber the Tiger having a rare logo on his blue cap, it's not even in his in-game model. In early copies of Diddy Kong Racing, a Killer Instinct logo appears in some of the buildings in Star City, but it got removed later on with the new releases of Diddy Kong Racing. There's actually a secret shortcut in Tricky's Challenge. It's right behind these bushes. Here are some things you're not supposed to see in the boss races. You see that boulder? That's a nice looking boulder. Too bad it just disappears afterwards. You see that bunch of large snowballs? One of them actually gets stuck. Don't believe me? Just keep on watching. The fireball just stays there after the dragon shoots out the fire. All the other fireballs just flat out disappears. Except for this one. I'm not sure why it doesn't disappear. Has anybody noticed that Tip Top is actually driving the race course backwards. I mean, he's going the wrong way. Kazooie was name dropped in the bio description for Banjo in the instruction manual. The DS remake intro was a nod to the story in the instruction manual in the N64 version. According to the instruction manual, Pipsy and her entire family were left homeless due to whiz pigs. According to the instruction manual, Taj the genie hasn't been seen in over 50 years. The instruction manual also states that whiz pig took control of the creatures with his magic and forced them to guard a piece of the amulet. Despite guarding the amulet, none of the bosses are actually evil by nature and are willing to help you break whiz pig's spell. The instruction manual states that Tosh the genie is the genie of the mountain, but in the game he states he's the genie of the island. Tosh said he was looking for an island champion, but after you unlock TT, upon research it turns out TT is the fastest driver in the entire game with high top speed and acceleration. Wait a minute. Be right back, I, I gotta check this out. You son of a bitch. Whoa, 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 whoa,
Explain. No, 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 we're not done here, we're not done here. You are the fastest driver in the entire game, and we have footage of you right there. Is this not you? Is this, or is this not you? No, 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 bring that ass here, boy, bring that ass here, boy, bring that ass here, boy. If you acted like your beloved courses, why didn't you race? Why the hell we even have this tournament in the first place? We could have just sent you, but no, you want to be, oh, hi, I'm TD, I'm a lazy motherfucker, but yet you just decided you're too weak, bitch. You're the most fastest fucking racer. You lazy fucking cunt. You know what, TT? You know what? Go suck on my Ikon Boka. Now get out of my face. You piece of shit. According to the bio description for Tip Top, he doesn't like racing at all. Take a look at this footage right now. And the introduction for Drumstick, just watch. Do you notice anything weird about it? He's clearly using an airplane in Snowball Valley. Last time I checked, you can't even use an airplane in Snowball Valley. So was it at one point we were able to use airplanes in Snowball Valley? You know what else is wrong? Banjo is using an airplane in Crescent Island. Last time I also checked, you can't even use an airplane in Crescent Island. There's only hovercrafts and cart. Was it at one point where we were supposed to use airplanes as well? The reason why Crunch joined Diddy Kong is to spy on him. Underneath the Dragon Forest boss racetrack, there's an unreachable golden balloon. There's an unused TT challenge door. Not sure what it will be used for, but my guess is that after you beat all the time trials, you have to go through that door and race him one on one. I mean, that's my guess. Instead of golden bananas, rare coins were used instead. They function the same as the golden bananas. There's unused character balloons of Diddy Kong, Conker, and TT didn't have any character balloons. What this could have been, I have no idea. There's an unknown sea monster that was planned to make an appearance in Sherbert Island. In the game files, there's a pterodactyl labeled Terry Boss, and it was grouped with the other bosses. There's even unused pterodactyl sound effects. Here, have a listen. Ah! Is it possible that the purple pterodactyl in Hot Top Volcano was at one point the boss of Dino Domain? If you boost from the starting line and immediately turn to the right as you drift as shown in the video, and make sure you pass this part of the mountainside, after that drive for a while until it says wrong way. Keep on driving and boom, you win the race. There was a Diddy Kong Racing soundtrack CD in the shape of Diddy Kong's head, but there's a problem. Diddy Kong's fat ass head was so big that some CD players couldn't even play it due to the shape of it. I mean, just look at it. I mean, what kind of shape is that? I mean, holy shit. In Everfrost Peak, you can see the planet Saturn. It can also be seen in, in Snowflake Mountain Hub World, but it's only upon opening the challenge door, cutscene is when you're able to see it. Spaceport Alpha has some changes. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. Star City has some changes as well. Here's the side-by-side -side comparison. There was a Diddy Kong Racing promotional VHS tape that was only available if you managed to get a subscription to Nintendo Power. It was basically to promote the game. In a German Diddy Kong promotional tape, there was a bunch of beta footage. This includes Crunch being called Crash, for some reason. Diddy Kong's name not being shown when she showed up towards the end of the introduction. Diddy Kong Racing having a early title font. Rare Corn being used instead. And as well as a very early version of the Hub World.
you can obviously tell that Crunch wears a skull and, and crossbones leather jacket. And in Donkey Kong 64, there's some Kremlings that also wear a similar skull and crossbone leather jacket. Some led to believe that one of the Kremlings is actually Crunch. To remind all of you, Diddy Kong Racing released in November 24th, 1997 in North America. And Donkey Kong 64 was released in November 22nd, 1999 in North America. There might be some truth to that theory. But who knows? Diddy Kong Racing first started as a real-time strategy game about cavemen and time traveling, but it got scrapped not that far into development. After that real-time strategy game got scrapped, it got turned into a racing game called Wild Cartoon Kingdom, and then later on called Adventure Racers. This mammoth character was planned to be in the real-time strategy game and was planned to be in Wild Cartoon Kingdom slash Adventure Racers, but it was scrapped alongside with this crab and donkey character. If you really think about it, was this mammoth character a beta design for Tosh? Wild Cartoon Kingdom slash Adventure Racers was later renamed to Pro-Am 64, a sequel to RC Pro-Am that was originally released on the Nintendo Entertainment System that Rare worked on back in the day. Pipsy was planned to have a game of her own. Well, it really wasn't Pipsy at all. It was a character called Astro Mouse. Nothing is known about the character and the game. It was later scrapped and the character got redesigned and it got its gender changed to a yellow girl mouse called Pipsy. In the game files of Diddy Kong Racing for the DS, there's an unused Yoshi sound effect. Yoshi! Tapping the A button makes you faster than just holding it. If you don't believe me, here's proof. I'm going to show you holding the A button right now and then I'm going to switch over to tapping the A button multiple times. There's an unused snow version of the first boss race in Dino Domain. And I think it might be used for the unused Pterodactyl boss. Prince Tricky from Star Fox Adventure at one point was going to be the same Tricky from Diddy Kong Racing. But ever since Microsoft bought Rare, they decided to separate the characters. If you're further away from the other characters, the other characters polygon and textures get less and less noticeable. Due to the fact you're not supposed to see them like that. In Crescent Island and Treasure Caves, if you look closely, you can see another pirate ship in the distance, and as well as a small house near a cliff. In all the racetrack in Donald Domain, there was always a green brontosaurus. Except for Jungle Falls, skeleton remains of the brontosaurus, in which you can go through it. What if I told you it's the same green brontosaurus? I get the feeling Jungle Falls was going to be the last level for that world. You know, being a kid's game, they don't want the Brontosaurus being dead. So I'm guessing he switched Hot Top Volcano being the last race course for that world instead of Jungle Falls. And you're probably wondering, how did it die? Well, is it possible that the yellow T-Rex from the intro killed the, the green Brontosaurus? Just speculating. In Everfrost Peak and Icicle Pyramid, you can see a small village and other buildings in the background. Remember in the story in the instruction manual, it states that Pipsy and her family lived in the mountains and were left homeless? What if she and her family lived in one of those houses in Snowflake Mountain? Once again, just speculating. After the release of Diddy Kong Racing DS, many people had theorized that this tip top is not the same tip top like the one from the N64 version due to his high pitched voice from the DS version. Tip top from the N64 version, Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie as a fully grown adult turtle. And in Banjo-Tooie, Tip-Top was already a parent. Everyone starts to speculate that the son of Tip-Top is the Tip-Top from Diddy Kong Racing for the DS, also known as Tip-Top Jr. But who knows if this theory might be true or not. In Snowball Valley, if you go around the storyline, 
just once and just drive forward, there's a possible chance that some of the characters will get stuck in the ice. Use a blue balloon in Snowball Valley and go behind one of the large snowballs. There's a possible chance you can actually drive on top of it, just for a few seconds. If you stand underneath the bell and keep on hopping under it in Boulder Canyon, turn around to see the bridge go up. The other characters will fall into the water and they have no choice to go around it. But if you stand underneath the bell and keep on hopping under it and not look back, you can see the other characters go through the bridge even though the bridge is still up. There were three planned Diddy Kong Racing games. First being Donkey Kong Racing, a sequel to Diddy Kong Racing. It was first shown at E3 of 2001, with a trailer shown of the concept of the game. The characters that would have been in the game were Donkey Kong, obviously, Tiny Kong, Diddy Kong, Tosh the Genie, Kitty Kong, Lanky Kong, and Cranky Kong. It looks like you were able to ride the animal critters from Donkey Kong Country, and it's most likely hinted that if Tosh is actually in the game, it's most likely the other characters from Diddy Kong Racing were planned to appear in this game. And the characters were able to switch the animals during the race, which would have been a cool concept, I'll admit. But the game was later scrapped. Donkey Kong Racing was later reworked to Saberman Stampede, a 3D adventure game planned for the original Xbox, and then later for the Xbox 360. You were able to use a rope gun to ride and capture animals but it was later cancelled due to the lack of direction and objective on what, what the game was supposed to be. Another cancelled sequel was called Diddy Kong Racing Adventure. was a game pitched by Climax Group in 2004. The story would have been taking place after Wizpig got defeated in Diddy Kong Racing. Wizpig will forge an alliance with the Kremlin to get his revenge. While Diddy Kong was visiting Timber's Island, the Kremlings had kidnapped the members of the Kong family while Wizpig was trying to take over Congo Island into a gigantic raceway. This forced Diddy to gather the racers from the original Diddy Kong Racing to challenge Wizpig once again in order to stop him from destroying Congo Island. At one point Wizpig was gonna get replaced by a brand new villain called Baron Von Snort, a white rhino. The character would have traveled between different villages within the island to challenge the bosses of the island. In order to defeat the bosses, the player must collect certain items in order to defeat the villains. After defeating the bosses, the other Kongs would have been saved. There would have been like non-racing events just like an obstacle course and as well as stunt challenges. The vehicles of choices would have been an airplane, jet skis, quad bikes, buggies, and hover scooters. There was also plans to change vehicles within mid-race as well as customize your own vehicles. The other modes would include a standard race mode, time trial, and knockout cup. Whoever got last place is eliminated from the race. There was also a demolition derby mode show off mode and as well as a somewhat similar to Simon Says mode in which the player must perform various skills, must perform like different tasks in order to get skill points. And there's also a mode called Fruit Bowl in which the players must collect certain type of fruit in order to win. There was also planned to have 14 characters. Each character would have a unique special move by collecting dark fruit. Didicon would have returned in the game, well obviously. His special move would, at would attack the opponents with giant gorilla faces. Tiptop would have returned, and his special move was spinning rings of turtle shells. Timber also would have come back, and his special attack, a supersonic roar that will slow down the other character. Crunch would have returned, and his, and his special move is to use his jaw to chase down the other characters. Probably the most interesting thing I actually found was probably playable dark characters. 
and I had to guess is basically the evil counterpart of the other characters. Dark Pipsy would have used a special move in which she would throw triangular cheese wedges to damage the characters. This was basically will either slow down the character or make the character lose control of their vehicle. Dark Bumper would have used a mud tornado as a special move. And at one point, Climax Group wanted to bring back Conker and Banjo, with Conker having his look from Conker's Bad Fur Day. And his special move would include explosive nuts. Donkey Kong would have been unlocked after you beat the game. Oh wait, I, for I forgot one thing. Dixie Kong, Lanky Kong, and as well as Mumbo Jumbo were originally supposed to be in the game. The third canceled game was Diddy Kong Pilot. It was shown at E3 of 2001. One of the build had Diddy Kong, Donkey Kong, Dixie Kong, Cranky, a critter and King K. Rule, as well as a brand new character called Redneck Kong. Also, one of the other builds said to be presented at Space World, in which we have footage of, consists of Donkey Kong characters and as well as Mario characters being playable. This version had six Donkey Kong characters Diddy Kong, Cranky Kong, Donkey Kong, King K. Rule, Funky Kong, and Dixie Kong. And the six Mario characters were Princess Peach, Mario, Wario, Bowser, and Toad. Surprisingly, Luigi was not there. After that, there's nothing much known about this build. If I had to guess, it would have been like a placeholder of some sort. And the last build had had somewhat of a team system. Team Kong, consisting of Diddy Kong, Dixie Kong, Donkey Kong, and Funky Kong. Team Critter, consists of Critter, Claptrap, Clump, and King K. Rule. There actually was a secret team called Team Cranky, in which Cranky Kong is the only member. Not sure why he's by himself, but eh, oh well. All those bills were scrapped. The game was now reworked into Banjo Pilot. I remember this rumor around 2012 during my high school years, but the rumor states that there was gonna be a Diddy Kong Racing sequel in the works for the Wii U. Yeah, the game would have been developed by Monsters Games and by Retro Studio. It would include lesser known Nintendo characters, such as Takamaru from the Mysterious Murasame Castle, Dylan from Dylan's Rolling Western, Mallow from Pushmo, and Rusty from Rusty Real Deal Baseball, in which the whole point of the game is basically whoever wins the racing tournament will become the next breakout star for Nintendo. To be honest, that would have been a cool idea, having these lesser known Nintendo characters race it out in order to become the next in order to be revived or possibly become the next breakout star for Nintendo. A lot of people started speculating about this rumor because one, Diddy Kong was not playable in Mario Kart 3DS, nor he was not playable in Mario Kart 8, in which a lot of people started to speculate that Diddy Kong Racing 2 was in the works. But in the end, that rumor came to an end. Kinda sucks, to be honest. In an article called Behind the Scenes, an interview with Conker, it states that one of the Diddy Kong Racing characters was arrested. And using the Wayback Machine, I found out that in the old Rare website, and under the blog category, in the mini scribes on July 27, 2012, it states that Bumper the Badger was the one that got arrested. I couldn't find the actual blog, so this is the closest thing we're ever gonna get. But either way, yeah, Bumper got arrested. What he got arrested for? I have no idea. According to Chris Saber, I hope I pronounced his last name correctly, but anyway, he states that unkind people at Rare called Whizpig, Jizzpig. Timber the Tiger was originally supposed to be the main character of Diddy Kong Racing at one point, as well as other games as well. I made a video called Timber the Tiger, the video game mascot that never was. It basically goes more in depth on how Timber the Tiger was basically, he was supposed to be the next big thing for Rare. So yeah, check that out if you want to go more in depth. We might never get to see a release of Diddy Kong Racing ever again. I meant for the original N64 version and as well as the DS version. Because overall, Microsoft basically owns all the characters except for Diddy Kong, Dixie Kong, Tiny Kong, and as well as Crunch. All the other characters are owned by Microsoft. So yeah, basically if you're not a Kong or a Kremlin, you're basically owned by Microsoft. That could be a good reason why we haven't seen any of these characters in years outside of Diddy Kong Racing, if you really think about it. In Bandicazooie Nuts and Bolts, there's a character called Trophy Thomas. His nickname is called TT, which is actually a reference to, well obviously, TT from Diddy Kong Racing, due to the fact they both have something to do with time trials. And to save ghost records. You cannot tell me that Trophy Thomas is somehow related to Timber the Tiger. I mean, just look at them. I know that he's a cheetah and Timber the Tiger is, well, a tiger. 
My best guess? I want to say they're probably cousins. Ah, uh, finally, I'm done with this iceberg. Yeah, sorry about that. I was supposed to finish this iceberg video in April, but you know, Movie Studio 17 Platinum kind of shit itself, so I lost all the save data and had to restart from scratch. So yeah, I do apologize if the video got delayed until May. Either way, yeah, I'm finally done with this video. So yeah, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Hello friends.